Mr. Floof, who is the Obama carryover campaign architect for Harris, say that Donald Trump a few years ago should be destroyed. Uh, Mr. Goldman said that uh, he should be eliminated. We just had the Department of Commerce Secretary said that he should be extinguished. Uh, Hillary Clinton said that he was evil. They all have used this eliminationist rhetoric, even after, after uh, Joe Biden said that we have to put a bullseye on Donald Trump. And he said he had that sort of Phantom of the Opera eerie speech where he said that ultra MAGA and semi fascist. So they have used every hyperbole you can think of, even though we know that this Secret Service on two occasions has exhibited to the country they cannot protect him for a variety of reasons. And we know that when you lower the bar, the reduction ad Hitlerum, that it's okay to say that the president, former president, and possible future president is Hitler, well, then you know that that calculus will be to every nut in the United States. If I shoot Donald Trump and he's Hitler, half the country will be happy, and I can do it because two amateurs almost did it, and I can do better than they can. So we, we're creating a very dangerous situation. There was a poll taken about the Democratic party members, and they asked, would you be unhappy if Donald Trump was shot? And 25% said no, and 25% said they were unsure. We had a New York Times columnist, James McCorder, uh, very well respected, and he said it just would have been better if Donald Trump had been shot and not he hadn't missed. That's mainstream right now, and they really do believe that he represents um, not just a speed bump, but a complete obstacle to this progressive project. And they feel that if he were to be elected, there would be sizable changes in their vision of America. It would return to what a lot of the majority of people think it should be. In other words, we would be voting on election day with a license as they do in Europe. An ID. There would be no illegal immigration. We could stop it as he did the last two months. We would have certain friends that we would be there under any circumstances, and we would have certain enemies. We'd be Jacksonian. No better friend, no worse enemy. All of that they feel is not nuanced or it's not globalist. I don't know, but they they I can't I can't convey enough the level of hatred they have for him the left our political climate must be exposed because we a climate where rhetoric from the left is not just heated but outright dangerous when you have prominent figures using terms like destroy eliminate or even extinguish in reference to a political rival what message do you think that sends it's not just political theater anymore it's fueling real violent sentiments among people who are already on edge assassins already tried to shoot trump many times is it really a far stretch to think that the left secretly called those shots? No pun intended. Think about it. When the media and Democrat leaders compare Trump to Hitler, a man responsible for millions of deaths, they're not just attacking his policies, they're dehumanizing him. And when you dehumanize someone, you make it easier for unstable people to justify extreme actions. This isn't just speculation. We've already seen two assassin attempts against Trump. This rhetoric lowers the bar for anyone who believes they're justified in taking things into their own hands. To make matters worse, you have major media outlets and respected columnists openly entertaining the idea that maybe we'd be better off if Trump had been shot. We're in a very dark place. If the mainstream media can get away with promoting this kind of rhetoric without facing major backlash, that tells you something about the state of our national discourse. It shows that there's a real, festering problem in the way the left and its media allies see their political opponents, not as Americans who disagree, but as obstacles to be removed. The media has proven itself to be incompetent yet again. That's one word for it. Corrupt, biased is another, are two others. A stunning headline from the front page of the Denver Post declared, gunman dies in attack. What in the actual F? When we first saw this headline circulating, we thought it was a joke, but it's real. That's how they're describing an attempted presidential assassination. And the New York Times at first went with Trump hurt, but safe after a shooting. You know, like he was just, you know, it was a drive by, like he was in, on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> no, there was no mention of an assassination attempt. Then there's Forbes for the W, 
who in a now deleted article asked Reader Sunday, will surviving gunfire be Donald Trump's next appeal to black voters? It was from a DEI writer. That's their beat. Everything must be seen be be through the DEI perspective. Since when did laws and the basis of America stand for ruthless opposition alienation? That's not democracy. It's tyrannical authoritarian leadership. Now think about the implications if this kind of talk were directed the other way. Imagine if conservative figures had said something similar about a Democrat president. The media would be in full-blown outrage mode with 24-7 coverage condemning the dangerous rhetoric and demanding accountability. But here, it's largely shrugged off, normalized even. And that hypocrisy is not lost on everyday Americans. Hansen pointed out that Trump isn't just an obstacle to the progressive agenda. He represents a return to a more traditional vision of America. A vision where voting requires ID, where illegal immigration isn't tolerated, and where allies and enemies are clearly defined. That's a vision that terrifies the left, and it's why their rhetoric has become so extreme. They know Trump threatens their long-term agenda to fundamentally reshape America into something unrecognizable, a globalist project with open borders, endless regulations, and ever-expanding government control. What's at stake here is more than just a political contest. It's about the preservation of free speech, fair elections, and national sovereignty. If we continue down this road where violent rhetoric is normalized, where dehumanization is encouraged, and where the media plays along, we're heading toward a future where political violence becomes more than just isolated incidents. It becomes the expectation. In the end, the question isn't just whether or not you like Trump. It's whether or not you believe in the right to have a political disagreement without being vilified, demonized, or targeted. Because if the left succeeds in making Trump the enemy, it won't stop with him. They've shown that they're willing to use these tactics on anyone who stands in the way of their agenda. And if that isn't a wake-up call, I don't know what is.